Cards Against Creatures, Round 1 Cards Against Equestria? Gallus asked. Classes at the School of Friendship had ended for the day, so the student six, made up of Sandbar, Gallus, Yona, Smolder, Ocellus, and Silverstream, were all gathered in their dormitory. About half an hour ago, Sandbar had asked all of them to gather there so he could talk with them about a new game that they could play together. That's right, Sandbar replied. It's a fun card game that we can all play together. That tagline for the game is Cards Against Equestria, a party game for horrible ponies. That caused five eyebrows to raise in confusion. Why you don't want to be a horrible person? Yak best at everything, she said with her signature yak pride. It does kind of sound strange, Ocellus added. Plus, Gallus interjected, if the goal is to be a horrible person, pretty sure that griffins win automatically. Every creature again looked at Sandbar quizzically, but the pony simply gave a lighthearted chuckle before continuing. Look, I know that it sounds strange the way I'm saying it, but come on, hear me out. He began. The other day, when I was having my counselor meeting with Starlight, she talked about how proud she was of how strong our friendship was between the six of us, saying that we represented everything that this school stands for. Uh huh, that was nice to hear, Ocellus cooed. Well, we did recently save all of Equestria, Smolder offered up. Yeah, if that doesn't get compliments of our friendship around here, I don't think anything would, Gallus added. Anyway, Sandbar continued, after all that, then she told me about this game. She said that it was kind of a lot of fun to play with your friends, and almost every round has you rolling on the floor laughing. This got the other five to lean in closer in interest. Though, he continued, she also said that the humor in the game can get kind of, well, raunchy. That got most of the others to pull back a little, except for Silverstream. Ooh, you mean like where Professor Applejack lives? Smolder simply turned towards the hippogriff. Raunchy, not ranchy. Oh, she drolled on, then she deadpanned. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Ocella stepped in forward to explain. Basically, it means energetically earthy or... She hesitated for a moment. Sexually explicit. There was an uncomfortable moment of silence followed by that explanation, which finally broke when Sandbar spoke up, scratching at his mane awkwardly. Yeah, Starlight did say that was a lot of what the game was like, and it could make a really awkward conversation with close friends. But, he continued, now sounding more confident, she also said that if you can make it past all of that and still have a lot of fun, then that means you have a friendship that can survive anything. Ocellus was the first one to have her interest peaked. Oh, so it's kind of like a test of how strong our friendship is? Yeah, yeah, pretty much like that, Sandbar replied. We can have a ton of fun and make our friendship even stronger, maybe. He then looked around the room at each of them. So, what do you say? Do you want to play? The other five all looked in between themselves. Finally, Ocellus was the first to speak up. Well, if it will prove how strong our friendship is, then sure, I'm in. And if it's fun, then I'm in too, Silverstream explained. Great, Sandbar said. Then he turned towards the others. Uh, what about the rest of you? Yona raised a hoof to her mouth. Yona not sure. Yak's best at everything, so Yona not want to be worst person. Sandbar began to frown at her response. Well, okay, I guess if you don't want to. That's okay, Yona, Silverstream spoke up. You don't have to play if you don't want to, and we respect your decision. This caused Yona to smile contently. I guess this game is just going to be the one that Yaks aren't really best at, she added. And that quickly caused Yona's expression to shift. You take that back, she yelled, pointing her hoof at Silverstream. She then turned to face Sandbar. Okay, Yona in, she said with a stomp of her hoof. Well, great, Sandbar smiled. He then turned towards Gallus and Smolder, who were the last two to join. Eh, sure, why not? Gallus said with a shrug of his shoulders. It sounds like fun. Plus, if we get into trouble with the teachers, we can just tell them that it was Starlight's idea. So, hey, no consequences. Once Gallus has agreed to play, every creature turned to look at Smolder. Well, if everyone else is playing, then I'm not going to be the one to spoil the fun, so sure, I'm in too. Awesome! Sandbar exclaimed. In this case, every creature gather into the center of the room while I explain the rules. He then reached over and grabbed the small black box, while the other five sat down on the floor, forming a circle in the center of the room. Opening the box, Sandbar pulled out two stacks of cards, one white and one black, with the stack of white cards being much bigger. Okay, so first off, we each start with ten white cards, which all have a statement written on them. He began to shuffle the white cards. Then, on each player, they will take turns being the card princess, who takes a black card and reads off the statement on that, but it will have a blank space on it. 
the other players then select one of their cards with the funniest statement to match the black card, and then the card princess then has to read them all out and select one of them as the winner. If you win, you get one point, represented by the black card, and then the next player to their left becomes the card princess. You then draw another white card until you have ten again, and once everyone has been the card princess once, then that will be one round. He explained. Well, sounds simple enough. Osella spoke up. She then looked around the room and got affirmative nods from all the others. So, how many rounds does the game have? Well, Starlight said that a game can have as many rounds as you want, though she recommended ten, so we'll go with that. Senbar answered as he continued shuffling the cards. When he was done, he then began distributing the cards to himself and the others, one by one, until they all had ten cards. Once every creature picked up their cards and took a look at what they were, they all collectively changed expressions, realizing exactly what this game would entail. Oh, wow. Ocellus blushed as she read her cards. These are certainly, uh, raunchy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Silverstream laughed out loud. Oh my gosh, I'm already laughing already. <laughs> you said it, Gala said to her with a smile of his own, though his was more devious. This is gonna be so good. If the two of you are done making out... Smolder chimed in, which earned her a glare from Gallus, but quickly turned into a blush when Silverstream looked at him. Alright, every creature, Senbar interjected. How about I be the card princess first, so you can all get a feel for the game, and then we rotate left? He got an affirmative five smiles and head nods in response. Alright then. Reaching over, Sandbar took the first black card from the deck. Alright, here we go. He began, reading the text on the card. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with blank. After hearing the prompts, the other five started looking through their cards, trying to pick out the one that would be the funniest match. After about ten seconds, they all had made their choice and handed the cards to Sandbar. Once he had all the cards, he then quickly shuffled them so that he wouldn't know beforehand whose card it was. Alright, uh, first card. Sandbar began, picking up the first card. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with a negative body image that is totally justified. That's kind of more accurate than I was expecting from a game like this, Smolder commented. Well, moving on, Senbar continued. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with inserting a mason jar into my anus. Ouch, Silverstream said, instinctively putting her talon around her nether region. Especially if that's every child doing it just to one person, Smolder added. Gala smirked. See, now this is the kind of thing that I was expecting from a game like this. Senbar drew up another card. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with a finger up the butt. The crudeness of the language made Ocellus blush, and she was inwardly wondering just how long she could last. So wait, does this not include the hoofed kids? Silverstream wondered aloud. Sandbar drew another card. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with vehicular manslaughter. Yep, that's a pity, Smolder deadpanned. And finally, Sandbar began. It's a pity that kids these days are all getting involved with the florist genocide. That raised a few eyebrows. Uh, what a florist? Yona asked. Oh, the florists are a species type of plant-like creature. Ocellus began, launching into one of her trademark lectures. That went all around stealing all of the water from a region, leaving all other plants around for them to die. Also, they used the tactic of using their innocent appearance to pretend to be good and kind to fool everyone around them that they saw and thought that were good, and the crab-nasty police that followed them to stop were actually the bad guys. Suddenly her expression changed to become more somber. Eventually, the crab-nasties decided that enough was enough and just exterminated the entire species to stop them once and for all. When the rest of the group noticed how emotional this was making her, she half looked away from the group. I really don't like thinking about all that because, well, the florists are kind of a lot like the changelings and how they used to be like, and if things were just a little bit different, maybe the same thing would have happened to us and we would be exterminated without being given the chance like we have. She then began to tear up as she continued. The sight made the rest of them wince, and Silverstream couldn't resist pulling Ocellus into a comforting hug. Wow. Deep, Kala said, sounding uncharacteristically wistful. And this is only the first round. He then turned towards Sandbar. So, who wins this time? Sandbar suddenly remembered the game. Oh, uh, right. He then looked at all the white cards he had been given. I think I'll go with that negative body image. Uh, who had that card? Still within the hug, Ocellus gingerly raised her hoof. Alright then, Sandbar spoke. That means you get one point, and the points are represented by the black card, so you hold on to this," he said, passing the black card over to her. Having now cooled down from her emotional outpouring, Ocellus accepted the card. 
Simply looking between the group for a second, Smolder finally spoke up. Anyone else see the irony in that the shapeshifter had the card about poor body image? Whatever, let's just move on with the game. Gallus interrupted. He then turned towards Sandbar. So, what's next? Well, first we all draw one more white card to put us back up to ten. Next we rotate for the new card, Princess, which is... you, Gallus. Smolder just couldn't help but giggle at the notion. You're up, Princess Gallus. Oh, don't you even... Gallus replied, pointing a hard talent at her. After everyone had drawn another white card, he then drew a black card and read it out. Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is blank? Each of the students began searching through their cards, looking for the best match, now including Sandbar who was participating for the first time. Once every creature had handed in their cards, Gallus began reading them off. Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is living a thousand lives each more terrible than the last? Yeah, that's probably something that the parents should be aware of, Lacella said. Must be pretty negligent parents to not already be aware of something like that, Sandbar responded. Gallus then drew another card. Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is cutting off my nose with the scissors? Smolder raised an eyebrow. So, it's happening right in front of them, and the teacher is still asking if they're aware of it? Definitely negligent parents, Sandbar said again. Gallus continued. Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is the ugliest boy in town? Wow! Silverstream spoke up. Gallus drew another card. Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is the world's largest baby, weighing over 700 pounds? I think we can officially say that this is the worst teacher ever, Smolder commented. I'm glad none of our teachers are like this, Ocellus continued. And finally, Mr. and Mrs. Flower, we called you in because we're concerned about Dawn. Are you aware that your daughter is getting deported? Okay, I can't decide whether the teacher or the parents are worse in this situation, Sandbar spoke up. Whatever, Gala said. I'll pick living a thousand different lives. Yes, you wanna win! Yona exclaimed, reaching over and grabbing the black card. You also are the next card, Princess Yona, Ocellus told her. The young yak smiled and then took a black new card and read it out aloud. Why my mustache smells so bad? The others quickly chose their cards and gave them to Yona. Why my mustache smell so bad? Some real spicy shrimps. Sandbar gave a small uncomfortable shrug at the idea of eating meat, while Gallus and Silverstream instead licked their lips, now feeling rather hungry. Why my mustache smell so bad? Yona's eyes suddenly widened when she read the next card. Ah, uh, She trailed off nervously. Huffing and puffing and blowing my stepdad. The rest of the group had similar reactions. Wow, that is seriously messed up. Smolder spoke up. Wanting to move on, Yona quickly picked up the next card and read it out aloud. Why my mustache smells so bad? Hot lettuce. That is one relatively normal thing, actually, Lucilla said. And a big improvement over the last one, Smolder added. Why my mustache smells so bad, Yona continued, now starting to calm down from the earlier card. Shit. She was now less calm. That one's more in between the previous ones, Gala said with a casual wave of his talent. And finally, Yona began. Why my mustache smells so bad? Authentic dragon cuisine. That card got a good laugh out of every creature. Yona decides this one wins. Booyah! Smolder exclaimed, standing up as she did so, and then taking the black card. And I can speak from personal experience that authentic dragon cuisine would leave someone's mustache smelling bad. Also, I'm a dragon, so I can say that. Ocellus turned towards Yona. I'm kind of surprised that you didn't pick... She squeamed a little. Y you know... She said with a slight wave of her hoof. Yona's eyes popped open again in realization, but quickly tried to hide it. Yona not want to think about that one. I think we're all in agreement about that one, Smolder said with a wry smile, sitting back down again, earning some affirmative laughs from the rest of the group.